TikTok comments. <laughs> Go. Give me your... <laughs> oh, I don't even know where to get started, bro. Like, if TikTok weren't as strict on the rules, bro, my, these guys in my comments would be getting hammered, dude. That's all it takes, one shop. Like, you can go, you can do a full day of RA. It literally just takes one shop and you can make, like, two, three hundred quid for the day. How long was you doing Amazon for before you actually started? Six months, bro. I did six months. Started in August, did 30k sales in six months. And just fucked off. <laughs> there isn't really much to say about that, like... Guys, we're back. So season two, episode three of the Edgecast. Now, we've got a special guest with us today. It's going to be a really good one. And it's probably going to be a little bit more FBA focused than a lot of the others have been. So if you're here for FBA or you're interested in it, this is going to be the one for you. Ben, who's with us today. Great story. A lot of success on Amazon. And you might also know him from TikTok. If you don't, follow him. Resell Republic will pop pop it up here. You're on Instagram as well, aren't you? Yeah, similar name, but uh, I think on Instagram, it's underscore Resale Republic, TikTok's Resale Republic underscore. Perfect. So we'll pop them up and they'll be in the description down below. You can take a look after watching this and let's get into it. So Ben, thank you for coming, mate. How did you get into this? What is your story? So we'll take it back. Education wise, going through school, was you someone that got the got the best grades, what was you at academically? And then was the nine to five the route for you originally? Yeah, so in school, I was kind of like in the middle. So I had B's and C's type stuff. Yep. Uh, I was in like top set for everything, but I was, I was a bit lazy in school. Like I never really did my work and stuff. I wasn't yep. naughty, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just never work. But uh, I played basketball, I was dead into sports. So at the time I wanted to be a PE teacher. Yep. So then went to college, they was trying to get me to do A-levels. But I was like, nah, I'm going to be a PE teacher. I'm yep. going to do B-Tech sport, get into uni, dead easy, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then when I was in college, I was like, I started reselling like Yeezys. I think started when I was like six, just before college, like 2016. How old are you now? Uh, 25 next week. Ah, uh, so we probably started reselling Yeezys around the same time then. Yeah, I think my first drop was uh, Moon Rocks. Outside Harvey Nichols down there, 48 yeah. hour we camp. St we started pretty much the exact same time. But did you cool. go to that camp? No, Harvey I Nichols? wasn't there, but I started on the Pirate Blacks. Yeah. Uh, so it was, I was, went Turtle Dove, then Pirate Black. Pirate Black. See, and right, we're just going to put this in here now. This is, again, how I've always preached that like starting reselling is something very early on. It's such a simple business model, but then everything you learn from that can carry on and get you to like this point and my exactly. point where there's fully functioning businesses that have come on the off the back of selling fucking shoes, <laughs> right? Carry on, mate. Sorry. Yeah, I got into reselling. I was doing Supreme as well at the time. Like yep. uh, I, got, I had a bot. Logos. Yeah, I had a, I had a sick bot up until they did capture. What bot did you use? Um, what's it called now? Something kicks, I think, was it? Heat something. Oh, uh, yeah, heated sneaks. Heated it? sneaks, yeah, bro. I've yeah, not yeah, heard that. Yeah. I've not heard that for years. Heated sneaks, bro. <laughs> yeah, I had heated sneaks until um, they added, Supreme added the capture. And then they add this thing with the capture keys. I tried it a few weeks and it was just stressing me out. So yeah, I stopped yeah. doing Supreme from there. Um, always done a bit of reselling on the side, but then I left college. I left college before I finished because I changed my mind. I was like, I'm not going uni. I don't want to be a PE teacher no more. Probably a bit gassed because I was making dough off shoes and that when I, I was know, like 17. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. It's like it, at that point in the game, you could make crazy amounts of money. It was quite scary, wasn't it? Exactly. What you could do. Like like in college when you're 16, 17, everyone's skint. I had like four grand. Yeah, bro, I mean, at the bro. time, I was, you know I mean? I was balling. Yeah. I was getting all these shoes and that. I had loads of sick trains. I had like turtle doves and pirate blacks personal. Yeah. Like I was into the, the, the scene as well. Do you know what I mean? I was buying loads of Supreme clothes, loads of mad trainers and stuff. So... I was in that kind of thing, um, left college because I was like, I'll get a job and I can put all my money into like doing more shoes and stuff. Uh, and then I ended up getting a job on Deansgate at a call center, you know, like mm -hmm. doing PPI and stuff. Uh, so that was like sales. And then I was in sales pretty much from college until like 18 months, two years ago when I started doing Amazon. Nice, nice, nice. So at that point, just got into FBA, but why? FBA what what was it that sort of pulled you towards that yeah so uh I was working in a sales job for about three years got sick of it and then me and my mate who did sales as well pretty much worked with him since leaving college uh 
we set up like our own call center type thing, mm -hmm. uh, like say about two years ago. Uh, and it was some, we'd always done PPI. Do you know what PPI yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. So we, we'd done PPI. Uh, and then there was another thing after called Plevin, which was similar. Uh, so we started our own thing doing this Plevin and it was going all right, but we literally got into it just as like the campaign was coming to an end. So we got oh, into okay. it at the worst time, basically. Yeah. Did it for 18 months. And then we was like, it all came to an end. We was going to start a new campaign, but I was just like, you know, try something else. I was already in AMA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing the eBay side. Yeah, yeah. Flipping like air fryers, like the ninjas and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like last Christmas. Uh, and then once I realized like the call center thing weren't going to work, obviously I'd seen the Amazon side loads yeah, of people yeah, posting yeah. and stuff. Uh, and I'd actually already set up my uh, LTD. Yeah, yeah. Like a few months earlier before this had all happened. So it's already set up and ready to go. So I had nothing to do then. So I literally just started with FBA, hit it hard from the start. Uh, it's sort of like my last chance because when that all failed, I'd just wasted like two years. You know, I had less money than I did two years ago. Mm -hmm. I had no like prospect, I had no job. Mm -hmm. So I was just like a low point, like and, thinking. And that's like another great thing. I, I put this on the stories the other day where you failed, right? In a business, but there's literally nothing fucking wrong with failing. No, and no. that's what I feel stopped so many people from even starting anything, whether it be yeah, FBA it or not, because they're worried about failing. And yes, you might, it might be a hard conversation. Like for me, when I was thinking about starting, I was really worried about if it did flop, like thinking, well, I've posted this on my social media, my friends are going to know, yeah. I'm going to have to tell my mum and dad. But at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, and then you just roll with the punches and you're back, you're onto the next in one. the past, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, and you, you're onto the next well, one. Well, at the time when it first failed, I was like, I've just spent all this time, all this money. Like I've been spending my money to live. So mm -hmm. my money's gone down. Don't have a job anymore. This didn't, ain't going to work. So I was just like, it's like mm -hmm. an elastic band in it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you propelled up because yeah. it gave me all that kind of drive. I yep. wouldn't have had that drive normally. If I yeah. didn't just fail that yep. and waste all that time, I wouldn't have had the drive. Like I knew with FBA, I, I, I knew people who did it. Yep. Shout out the money project, Craig. I was, I was just going to bring him up actually. He got me on it. Yeah. Um. So I'd seen people do it. Obviously with the call center, it was kind of like unknown, but with FBA, you know it worked. Yeah, yeah. And that's, again, another thing that like, again, the comment section fuels this, oh, it doesn't work. It's, there's that many people doing it. It can be that structured, right? It's at a point now, I've just, my best mate, I've just got him started this week. It's like, if it's not working, the only variable that changes is you. You're doing something you, wrong, aren't It's you? just exactly. you. The business, it's so like systemized, straightforward, process driven, that if it, you start complaining, it's not working, it's on you. And people just have to accept that there is a level of accountability. And 100%. as we know, a lot of people don't like doing that. That's what made me jump on it. The good thing as well, because I, I knew I had a bit of money saved up. Yep. It weren't like I was starting with a low amount. I had to build it up. I was like, if I try this and it works, yep. I've got a bit of money that I can throw into it straight away. And what so. was your starting budget with Amazon? Well, I started with just like a grand, yep. like just to test, the, test waters. the waters. But I didn't even really say to myself, I'm going to do a grand. I just went out, spent about a grand on stuff, sent yeah, yeah. it in just to see how it'd work. And one of my first items was like a Sharpie pen. Yep. The profit was shit. I was making like a quid on each one or whatever, probably less than that, like 80p. Sent them in, but I was just buzzing that they were selling, do you know, when yeah, you check yeah. the app and you say, I was like, right, you know, it works. And I just and that, that's it. what you need, isn't it? Like it was, for me, it was even like reselling that. It was getting that first pair of Yeezys. Once you get the first sale, you've done that first thing, you're hooked then. Because right, confirmation, this process works. Now it's rinse and repeat and you dub double down on it. Yeah, definitely. And so starting out with, you, you did a grand, how, how was you doing that? Was it mainly retail arbitrage online? All retail arbitrage. I literally, I always say this in my videos as well to people who get started because people start and the thing they always say is, uh, oh, I'll go to the shops, there's nothing there. Or if, if I go there where you go, you got to always get all this stuff and I don't. The first three times I went out, I literally came back with nothing. Yep. And I was going all day. I was yep. going to all these shops. It's like a skill. You've got to develop it. Yep. Like I, I was probably walking past loads of stuff, yep. not even knowing, not knowing where the clearance section yep. was, all this daft stuff. And it's like, you say, once you get something, all the stats are looking good. The profit looks looking yeah. good. Get it, send it in and it sells. And you're just like, yeah, yeah. Go as hard and as like, you want I to. even had that today. Someone messaged me on my personal Instagram today. Don't know how they found it from aftermarket. <laughs> But yeah, like message request saying, um, been signed up for a week and um, I've been out twice, can't find anything. And I understand, that, and he's like, I, I need a lot. He's like, he was saying, I need a lot of extra help. I'm thinking about throwing the towel in. 
you're two days into something. Why are you thinking about, you're already sort of admitting failure in your head. Yeah, exactly. You, you shouldn't be doing that. It shouldn't be an option. Like my mate was saying, if, if this doesn't work, should, uh, I'm not tied into anything with like a limited company, am I? Or I'm not tied into like a, a seller amp subscription or buy bot subscription. And it's like, mate, why are you already panicking about that? <laughs> You've not even got the ball rolling and you're already thinking about your way out. Um, now, even for us, it still happens where we've gone out filming for the day and we found nothing until the final store. And it doesn't like, it can be, yes, You over time, you're going to get more and more consistent with it. 100%, but you can still have those shitty days, 100%. but it does, it's not going to stop you from going out the next day. Yeah, of course. Like you, um, the net, like for us, the day we actually got on camera, um, it is a vlog on our YouTube. It was just fail after fail to fail, got to an Asda and absolutely fucking cleaned up. And it's like, you don't know what's going to be in the next door. So you always need to just keep pushing and have that bit of resilience to speak. To, to just persevere with it. A hundred percent. I just decided the same thing one day. It's on one of my, uh, one of my first videos going to loads of super drugs in Manchester. I literally went to about five, pretty far away from each other yeah. as well. Didn't get anything or probably got like a 30 quid in profit from five shops and then mooched proper out of the way to this one I've never been to. Mm -hmm. And it was like in a little village, like you could tell no one goes yeah, there. Yeah. Went in bro. And I, like three fifty in profit from yeah, one super yeah. drug, absolutely cleaned up. Like I was walking out with like bags, like they was helping me take the bags to my car and that because I bought that much stuff. But it was just sick. Like it was like it was like I found this super drug. Yeah, been yeah uncharted territory. Like all this stuff I'd been accumulating for weeks and months. They just it was there, loads of it, and no one had been yeah, touching. So yeah. I just literally took cleaned every, up. every single one. And that's and that's a good thing with it. And then you can look at it. Yes, you've had wasted time that day, but when you look at it and let's say all the success that you got in that one store, when you spread that out across the day, as like an exactly. hourly rate, you, you've still had a fucking great day. That's all it takes, one shop. Like yeah. you can go, you can do a full day of RA, it literally just takes one shop and you can make like two, 300 quid for the day, yeah. plus all the others as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So is there a reason that you've never really ventured into the online arbitrage and mainly stuck at retail? Well, to be, to be honest, I started with retail because that was just like all I knew. Before I went away and since I've been back, I struggle a bit with online arbitrage, you know, but A to A, I do, yeah. I've started doing loads yeah, of A to A. A to A is, um, it's almost like, it's a little bit too simple, isn't it? Like it, it comes through quick bit of analysis, confirmation, order. It's, it's like a, the A to A, I was speaking to someone, uh, he actually owns a penthouse over there. I was telling him about A to A and he's like, this is fucking genius. Like, you found a money printer, like it's it not, is. it shouldn't exist. Um, that is for me, like when, whenever I have a call with someone, I'll be like retail arbitrage start, then A to A, then go into OA. And that is like, I feel A to A is your easiest introduction yeah. into doing online arbitrage. And then before you know it, you'll be fully blown OA. Like the guy I was in um, Dubai with, he did, um, he, I'm hopefully gonna, we'll have him on the podcast at some point, but he does 50K, Living to buy 50k profit a month purely away. Um, and like, again, people will say you can't make good money off it. Well, I've just spent three weeks in Dubai with someone and lived with their <laughs> man. He's doing 50 grand a month and he's chilling. Um, so, yeah, he will immediately shut down that comment section. But yeah, so with the OA stuff, um, I agree with you on that. Do you think that? you're going to get into eventually wholesale. What, what, what sort of your next step with it? Yeah. Well, to be fair, since I just got back from traveling, a bit of change of mind a few times, like first I was going to move to Asia. Now I stay here and like focus on it. So what I, I think what my plan is at the moment, I'm going to do RA, A to A. And I, d I do a little bit of a way here mm -hmm. and there in it until, uh, that reg probably. And then once I'm, cause I was looking into wholesale. I know you can do it without, but a lot of people say it's easy when you have reg. reg. So in my eyes, I think, I might as well just kill out RA while I can get it, yeah, get yeah, to that yeah. reg and then I can worry about that when it comes. No, that makes sense, mate. With um, traveling, let's jump into that. Um, so Ben, um, this is what's always weird about Discord and Discord communities. I only knew you by Discord name, didn't yeah. I? And then when uh, we did the aftermarket meetup, met in person and like, I was just like, oh, fucking hell, that's you. <laughs> it's crazy because all you see is the little Discord avatar. Um, but yeah, so we met at the meetup and then you said you were leaving, doing some um, traveling. Yep. Um, how did that go? And how did you find it with Amazon? How did having FBA help? Yeah, it was sick. So uh, originally I planned... So I, I ended up going away for two months 
originally what I was going to do, I took my laptop with me and stuff. I was going to uh, do a bit of a way while I was out there, try and mm. catch some A2As. I didn't have a prep center. I was just going to order it to my house yeah, and then yeah. come and send it all in when I got back. Uh, but then I got to Thailand and I was literally moving every two days. So I just thought, I thought that. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. I'll enjoy my holiday. Didn't touch Amazon at all. Just literally left the thing completely. Didn't update anything. Uh, left it for two months. I still made like nearly like a grand a month. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you even with the stock that had gone in. Just already the, gone in. was already left in. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Just left it completely. And I was like, just under a grand a month while I was out there. Obviously come back now and now I'm just getting the inventory get, stocked get, up again. Getting back into it. Mm. And <clears throat> so with your traveling, was that funded by FBA? Yeah, pretty much. Like how, how long have I been doing it now? So I started last August. <laughs> and then that last 18 month from doing the call center. Yeah, yeah. Like if you look at it all in one, like I would have lost, lost money. So that's the first money I made in like two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, I had savings, yeah, yeah. but since I quit my nine five, like two years ago, that's the first time I've been making like proper money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. And so did all your travel in. That's again, one of the things about, so what, just to clarify and make it clear in my head, FBA is your only income like at the moment. But it's the main one. I have a couple of other things like. But well, you're not you're not in a nine to five. No, absolutely not. Okay, got you. Not worked in a nine to five so for about two years. And but your other income, like I know you do your TikTok and stuff, it's all flexible in it. Yeah, everything's flexible. Yeah, I, I'm not like I'm literally tied down to nothing. That was my plan when I got back. I was going to come. I was going to sell everything. I was going to sell my car because I've got you know, I've got nothing. I can just go and go yeah, anywhere. Yeah. And that's like that's kind of my end goal. I think yeah. I think I want to be able to just complete say, freedom. Go to Thailand for a month. Yeah. Still work, just go there and then, yeah. like you said, complete freedom. Yeah. Like just be able to move when I can do what I want. And and, and that's one of the, the, the best things. And I experienced that, like even being in Dubai, yeah, I was stuck there for a while and genuinely couldn't get home because of the oh, floods. I've seen that in it, the floods, yeah, Sam, <laughs> something. Honestly, thing. fucked, bro. <laughs> um, I've got so many stories I'm going to talk about at some point about that, but it was, yeah, it was wild and I couldn't get home for a while. But then it got to a point, I was like, actually, I can get a flight home now. I was like, actually, no, I'm just going to stay another week. Yeah, and then that week turned into another, like, five, six days. And it's like, just kept extending well, because you, if, you've, if you've set yourself up and you've got yourself at a point where, yeah, you can work off the laptop, we're not the fucking Forex scammers that are like, oh, <laughs> you can just travel and make all this money. No, you do need a legit business, but you can literally be on the go and you can have complete freedom. No, you can. I, I weren't even planning to go for that long. I think originally I was planning uh, six weeks. So I did two weeks in Thailand with my mate. Then my brother lives in Vietnam. So I went over and my mum and dad came over to see him two weeks. And then when my mum and dad went home, I booked a one way. So I was just like, yeah, I'm yeah. in Vietnam now. I could either stay here, but uh, I knew someone who was in Bali. Mm -hmm. So I ended up flying there. Never been to Bali before. Stayed with them for two weeks. Uh, and that was just like addition onto yeah, my yeah. thing. Cause I was like, I can't be asked going home yet. Yeah, I've yeah. got the money. Like, I'm Why still not? getting Why money from it? Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Go there for two weeks before I go home. And that's, again, being your own boss, that is what it allows you to do. You're choosing right now to still be in that situation. Like, we're talking about it. How long was you doing Amazon for before you actually started? Six months, bro. I did six months. Started in August, did 30k sales in six months, and just fucked off. <laughs> there isn't really much to say about that. Like really, if you're watching this and you're still like thinking about starting or not even Amazon, like when I'm not just trying to push people to do Amazon, it's any fucking business where you're going to do your own thing and you're going to thrive at it. What else do you need to hear? Think about it. So back onto the FBA chat. Now, gone through Thailand, everything like that. Started out with a grand. How did you find start? Well, you, oh, you had your savings as well, didn't you? But have you, because I, like I said, I want to keep this FBA related, have you used any other funding sources other than savings? Has there been credit cards, uh, like the loans that are offered, anything like that? I have credit cards. I've had credit cards since I was 18. Mm -hmm. I was all, I was like pretty like clued up when I was younger, like when yeah. I, because, because I was, rese this is what you're saying about getting into reselling. Yeah, yeah. It just made me think more about money. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm 18, I just started getting credit cards out. Yep. And I never, I set up a direct debit, paid them every month. Yep. And I now I've just got a sick credit, credit score. score. Exactly. And I, I never even took a loan or anything just from them credit cards. Yeah. And I have an Amex yeah, yeah. business one now just for my stuff. Yeah. But I don't need I don't need the credit. I just do it for the points and yeah. shit. Well, that's it. Like I, yeah. we, me and Sam both flew to and from Dubai on points. It's like it's free. I did it all. It's so my flight uh, to Thailand one way was like six fifty, 
I got like 250 off that just with points. points. I've not even been doing it that long because you get the boost. Do you know if you spend however much in the first whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get like 30k points for free. So yeah. I had that plus like another 10k points or whatever. Yeah. And just used it. On my and phone. at the end of the day, like it's it's another one of those things where, yeah, it's, it even helps you in other areas of life. Like if you're bringing your credit score up, like, well, great when you're looking to go for a mortgage. Or something, That's what I'm or saying. Like, I've not, not needed it yet. Yeah. But just like you just, say, yeah, you say, might... go to get a mortgage or something. It's like, I've got to Experian. The other day was like maxed out, bro, like nine, nine, nine out of nine, nine, nine. That's and sick. then credit score was like uh, eight, ninety out of nine, nine, nine. nine yeah, yeah. But that's, the Experian one's always maxed out. Yeah, that's sick. That's such a good position to be in. Um, now, with like what I want to get to, normally a lot of people struggle with cash flow and sort of spinning that money as quickly as possible. Have you experienced that or have you always been pretty pretty steady with it? always been pretty steady to be honest like most of my stuff that I get it sells pretty fast do you know what I mean it's not like I'm sitting on loads of stock it's pretty like in and out um and I've always been good with money like I've always had savings do you know what I mean yeah. I don't go out drinking I did when I was like younger but I don't I, I'm not all I spend money on is petrol and food and gym and yeah, like, yeah that's about it that's all I do good and with the um so with your products the stuff you're looking at how do you run your operations? Because I had this question a lot. For us, if we get something in, we want it out the next day. Yeah. Do you follow a similar pattern or are you more relaxed with it? How, do, how does it work for you? Similar. So what, I, what I'll usually do is uh, I'll have like a box taped up ready, you know, open. Mm -hmm. And every time I get stuff, I'll just put it in the box. And yep. as soon as the box is fulfilled, yep. tape it up, get it out. Or some days, like some weeks, I'll just do RA every day for a full week. Mm -hmm. Get loads of shit back to my gaff, yep, and then just spend the weekend boxing it all up, get it all out on Monday. So it just depends. Like it's like you say with the freedom. Some days I'm on it, yeah. Some yeah. weeks I'm on it every day. Some weeks I'm just chilling, like yeah. And that's what I was going to ask you about sort of routine. How do, being your own boss, essentially, you could be like, well, I don't want to get out of bed till midday today. Yeah. How did you find it with this and sort of sliding into a routine? Is there anything that you you like? set yourself hard and fast rules where you're like, no, I need to be doing RA at least X amount of times a week. Or did you set yourself boundaries with it or stay more relaxed? Uh, I think at the start I was trying to do it like three times a week or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I don't like, I don't really have too much of a schedule. I go gym at about half 10 every morning. Yeah. Other than that. And then just, it's just new look, day every day to see what, see see what's what comes up. Some, see some days I'll get up, so maybe rest day for the gym <laughs> or whatever. Some days I'll get up, I'll sit in my bed put the telly on and I'll just go through fucking A to A from last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll make, you can make like a wanna before you even get out of bed. Exactly, exactly. You could sit on your laptop, open it up, look at the A to A leads that have come through, sit, purchase. All the price monitors. That's what, do you know when I first started actually? Yeah. That, that's, I did have a bit of a schedule online. So when I first started, I'd get up, I'd check all the price drop monitors. Yep. So I'd check like Argos and Smiths. Did you do click and collect? So I'd check them try and get something on click and collect at one of these stores. And then whichever store I'd got something, I'd drive there mm -hmm. and then go to all the stores around it. Yep. Just, just be more efficient with it. Do yep. you know what I mean? Rather than going and if you've got something guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. When it, when that's already there, you go and then if yeah. you don't get anything you, else, you, you start ask. your day then, don't you? Exactly. And that's the thing as well with the price drop monitors to any aftermarket member that's currently in, look at this because you will see that it's true. Pretty much all the price drops are happening early hours of the morning. Yeah. So, bro. If you wake up early or a decent time, and that's the first thing that you do in the day, you've got the best chance of securing that deal. Bro, I got my best product for FBA from the Argos price drop monitor. You've probably seen it as well because it burnt my head. It came through as a hairdryer, Remington hairdryer, mm -hmm. Hydrolux, 70 quid retail or something. Mm -hmm. Argos dropped it to 15 quid, yeah. Came through on the Argos price drop monitor. I went to like every Argos in Manchester, bro. <laughs> I was ordering 10. Yeah. And they won't let me order anymore. But it like something glitched out on the website and it kept letting me do it. So I was ordering 10, 10, 10 to all these places. I ended up ordering 120. Nice. Went round to all of them, collected them, get like filling my boots. Took me about a week to collect them all. Um and then and then I got I had all 120 then and it fucking went on the A to A. Amazon price matched it. Uh, yes. Went on yeah, A to A. Yeah, yeah. Oh bro, I was fuming. I sent it in. I was selling them for I was buying them for 15, selling them for like 65. I seen it on the A to A monitor like two days later, just after mine had got in there, yeah. literally within three days, bro, there's about 120 guys on the listing. Oh. I was fuming and it dropped from 60 quid to getting like between like 30 and 40 quid. 
it was still like over 10 pound profit per unit. Yeah. So it's sick. But at the, at the time I was making 30 quid profit per unit and I had 120 of them. And then that A to A monitor just done me in nice. That's the, that's the thing with, with sort of like the risk that you can run in some of these is that Amazon, and that's how A to A works for any of you that don't know, it literally is either pricing errors or price matching usually and price matching retailers like Argos, you've just seen a prime example of it. And that's with Amazon's own inventory. So it's not like, it's not like Ben sends his inventory in and then Amazon choose to drop the price on it. Mm. It's Amazon's own inventory that they own. They will reduce that to then match uh, to match Argos. So yeah, bit of a stinker. However, well, you say still, it's a stinker, but it's still insanely profitable. Mate, probably made about fifteen hundred quid off them. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean, so that's the kind of stinker. Well, exactly, but exactly. It could have been three grand or something. But yeah, 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 yeah. But that's the thing. It's it's still there, and it's still money that can be made. And again, it's. With like those price drop monitors, yeah, you're going to have to dig through a bit of shit. There's going to be stuff that we can't necessarily filter out because if we try to filter out, some things will then miss maybe the gems. Yeah, it just has to be. That's part of the work. That's, yeah. that's why the price monitor is good though, because like that's the only time I'll do OA. I'll never yeah. go on a website. I'm yeah, just yeah. Like, I've tried it in the past, but I've just not had much success with it. So I just don't do it. But I'll, the price monitors, it's sort of like making it easy. It's yeah, taking yeah, out yeah. the hard work. Yeah, it's it, just showing you what could potentially yeah, yeah, be there yeah, yeah. rather than you going through all the bullshit. And then also the price monitors still separate the the lazy people from the committed people, even though we're exactly. making it more efficient. Exactly. Because people loads of people fucking under. miss it. Yeah. And uh, there's been times where me and Sam will be looking and we'll be like, fucking hell, we've seen this. It's like, do we ping it? And then it's like, no, because <laughs> it should, own, the only people, like I don't want to pull that lead out and ping it because in my eyes, the only people that should be seeing that lead are the ones that put in the extra bit of work exactly, in. Yeah, yeah. It's there for a reason. Use it. Like get all of the value you can from the platform. And like you said there, 50 quid a month to have a membership. And then you did 1500 quid exactly. from one product. A to A monitors alone pay for the fucking Yeah, I know. Like, I know. It's, a to, a to, I, I wish there was more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Sometimes yeah. I sit there and I'm just waiting for them to come yeah, through. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so yeah, with, um, so that was your best product. Yeah. And, Let's flip it. Have you lost money on any products? A couple, nothing major though, honestly. Like, uh, I've, I've, I've not took a bit. Do you know what? There's one, actually, I bought this uh, thing that's in my inventory right now. It's uh, an electric shaver from Superdrug. And it was my fault. I didn't check the date. I didn't check the price in history. I was just in a rush, bought it. Uh, it was like 32 quid and now it's going for like 20 quid. So I just need to sell that and get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I've had to sell a couple of things for break even or like a tiny loss, but... No, I'm not, not the, talking the, anything else. Again, it's one of those where people worry about this. It's losing money and like losing money and stuff. But as long as you're, you're disciplined and you're structured and you're actually doing your analysis and stuff, you really minimize the chance of losing. Oh. Obviously, there's factors that we can't control. But the profits you're going to make from doing everything right yeah. will offset any minor inconsistencies. 100%. But when you get inside with like RA and A to A, it's like risk-free. I've fucked up loads of times. Got yep. home, looked at stuff and I'm like, oh, yep. what have I done? Yep. I'm just going to take it back. Yep. Yeah, or, yeah. or Amazon. Send, it, send back. it back. With Amazon, I just leave it 30 days if the price don't go back up. I start the refund yep. and I just I fucking leave it right till the last yeah, minute. Yeah, so well, they give me like exactly. another 30 days. Exactly. You're playing the game. Exactly. And, 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 and that is genuinely at that point risk-free. If you... Let's say you buy something, you're new, you're starting out. Yeah, I think this is right. I'm going to take the opportunity. You then ask people on the Discord, well, can someone double check this? Like, oh no. Well, all right, let's not, let's keep our toys in the pram. Just take it back. And then we go again tomorrow. It's a minor as well. And if you're doing RA consistently, so you constantly go into shops, like I go and buy something in boots and mess up, get home and realize. Well, then in like two days, I'm going to be at another boots. So yeah. I'll just take it with me and return it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caesar. And um, on the topic of boots, like, um, like what Ben was just saying then about stuff like that, Argos, it's not, these do happen all the time. Aaron, um, I was on the phone to him yesterday and he cleaned up in a boots where a load of electronic shavers were down from three, 250 to 300 quid down to 35 to 27 pound. Yeah. Like and say, it sat on the fucking shelf in boots and it's gone from, 300 quid to maybe £27.50. <laughs> Obviously, there's going to be some markup in the middle, innit? Always electric shavers and boots, bro. I've had loads. Yeah, and if you had it where the, um, like with boots as well, it can happen where um, at the till, 
your scan's different as well. Yeah, like, yeah, there's like yeah, hidden yeah. discounts that you oh, don't bro. even realize about. I've had a, little, I had a sick one in Superdrug. Um, don't like them body sprays, girls. Have. Yeah, they just spray all day like the kind of shit. Hawaiian Tropic. They had uh, like five different ones, and I went in the Superdrug, and it was reduced from like a tenner to two pound fifty, but just on two colours. Mm. I was like, that's dead cheap. Went and scanned them through. And I scanned them through and they went, came through as like a pound or one pound fifty or something, dead cheap. And I went to all the other super drugs, all still listed at 10 pound. But because I've been doing it, I know if something in super drug is yeah. in one shop, you go to the others, it's like the same system in it. So these are all listed for 10 pound. I'm just filling my fucking thing, going to the counter. The woman's looking at me where she scans them through. And they're coming mm -hmm. through at like a pound each and they're yeah. all in like disbelief. Yeah, yeah. And I remember the woman saying, it was at the fort, you go there as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Super drug, the fort. Uh, the woman was like, oh, they're a pound. Uh, yeah, I think I'll go get me some of them. I was like, yeah, man, go and check them all fucking gone. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, and it happens with like, uh, it's even like um, Asda with the games where like they can be like pennies um, crazy, for these it? games. It's There's so many like, there's so many ways to make money. You just need to know how to look for it and you need to know what you're actually looking for in the first place. And there's so many little jigs and hacks. And I guess for us, adopting them and using them comes back from the sneaker game where yeah. like for you, heated sneaks. For me, it was with that, like the easy drops, like moon rocks. So simple. We just yeah. had a, on the Adidas website, everyone sat in a queue. I was in a paid community at the time. I was paying like, being what like aftermarket is today. And they said to us, use this link. Splash page. Yeah. Straight past the splash every time. Buy, check out, buy, check out. And it was like just a money printer. Like every time you got that confirmation on the, after you paid, it was like another 400 quid, another 400 quid, another 400 quid. Opportunities like that still exist. And we actually had one. Um, what were they were? Um, did you see them? The tops, Bas was it Barcelona pack? Was it recently? It was like yesterday. So one of, it? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, six hundred pound retail. Yeah. Uh, one of our members who I actually know in real life, um, he's sold his today for one thousand one hundred fifty. Just entering a raffle though, like it was like an hour long. I think it was an hour long window for a raffle. Put your details in. All right, thank you. Six hundred quid profit. Nice. People won't even do that, bro. Tell <laughs> people. Tell people. I've done that back in the day when obviously they start, stopped doing all the camps and they turned everything into raffles. Yeah. I'd say to like my cousin and that, or oh, post this on your story, yeah, yeah. tag whatever. If you win, I'll give you a hundred pounds yeah. just cash for me to get the shoe or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh nah, I can't be asked. I'm like why? Just put it on. You might, you probably won't win. Yeah, yeah. You got like a, maybe a ten percent chance of winning, but if if you do win, I'm gonna give you hundred quid for yeah. nothing. No, so. uh, I. Every single one of my friends at the time would always say like, "What well, this was like in college, they were all like, fucking hell, I want to get into this, want to get into this, like, right? So let's walk through what you've got to do next." None of them did it. None of them at all. There was one of them that did it a little bit and then his dad started doing it and his dad's still in aftermarket today and his dad does it all now. And it's like his dad fully smacked it with everything and like fully yeah. got immersed into the Discord world and has made great money from it. But I don't, people will, I don't get it because it's like entering a raffle, back, especially back then, obviously when raffle botting became more um, sort of frequent and, competition became more intense. Obviously I understand then that you may think, well, the odds are so far out of my favor. Maybe it's not worth my time. Mm. But at that point, it was like so easy with the, do you remember the off-white, the 10? Yeah, yeah. I won every single one of those drops from a girlfriend at the time entering on her account once. The only pair I didn't get was the AJ ones. Yeah. Every single other pair I got hold of because I entered raffle once. Mm. Like, but I would try and get people at uni to do it. They wouldn't do it. I'm like, nah, not right. doing that. You got nothing to lose. I don't get it. Selfridges used to be good back in the day. Yep. You had to go in store yeah, yeah. to put your name down. Yep. So obviously when it's online, you get people from all over the country yeah, yeah, blasting yeah. it. But Selfridges, you actually had to go in. So you had a decent chance of getting them there. I won loads on Selfridges. Yeah. In London and that as well, like different ones. Yeah. Just yeah. go, um, not Selfridges, Harrods in London. I was going to say about the Harrods. Do you remember, did you do the, uh, do you remember the off-white, well, I think it was the off-white Ramoa, the suitcases that were see-through. Yeah, They'd yeah, have dropped yeah. at Harrods. Um, and I ended up getting, I think you got one or two of them from there. And then Ramoa on, no, there's a website called, it was called like 24 Sevres or something like that. I don't know, some weird French website. Mm. 
their website, like, it was, like, really low-key at the time. No one knew about it. And, like, me and all my mates were just checking out, checking out, checking out. And then all them suitcases, I think I was making, like, 15, 1,600 quid profit for one on. That it was fantastic. absolutely stupid. But 99% of people don't even know it exists. And, like, yeah. it's still today, bringing it back to Amazon, the majority of people don't realise they're buying from people like me and you. Yeah, I tell people all the time. Like, my sister was in disbelief. She was, like... Yeah. When I told her what I do, she was like shocked because she's thinking I buy all this shit off Amazon. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking just Every, coming from random guys. I know everyone thinks it's like... Um, I did though before I yeah, started. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, you, would, you wouldn't think any different yeah. really, would you? Um, everyone, it, it, yes, it's right to assume it. But again, if you just have a think about it and then the saturation argument on this of where, oh, there's too many people doing it, blah, 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 blah. Why would there be so many tens of thousands of people doing it in the UK if it didn't fucking work and it was exactly saturated. Not. Like it, Amazon, would, Amazon would fucking, as like the marketplace, it would struggle without yeah. FBA sellers. Six, it's like 60 odd percent of stock at the moment is sold by people like us. And that is only going up year on year. And it's like by 2030, it's going to be 70%. So Amazon are increasing the reliance on us. Yeah. But so that means more opportunity. Yeah. The saturation thing's stupid. I, I learned a good lesson to be fair, because I used to be one of those people that would look at stuff and be like, everyone's doing it, too yep. late, whatever. Um, what did he say? And I can't remember who said it, but he's basically saying, you're saying all this stuff's saturated. You're hoping that you're going to be the first person to find like this gold mine. You're going to jump on it. You're going to make all this money and before anyone else gets on it. And it's just unrealistic. Yep. Like if you want to be successful, you're going to have to compete with other people. There's yeah. going to be competition in anything where there's money to be made. Yeah. So rather than trying to find like this little thing that's going to make you rich, just like stop being a pussy and just compete with the rest of the people in it. Like if you think you're that good, yeah. do what everyone else is doing and compete and be better than them. Exactly. Mate, because you're yeah. not going to find this thing. You're no, not going to find yeah, this gold What is the anymore. magical unicorn idea? That, exactly. And is it just going to float into your head at some point? It's not going to fucking happen. It, and it, that's not to say that, yes, obviously people do come up with amazing ideas and they do start stuff, but... What the, you should be like, right, until I've got that idea, I'm going to get off my ass, yeah. put the work in, and then I'm going to build up a shit ton of capital. So when I've got that idea, exactly. I've not got a funding issue. Stop fucking waiting for it. Because to be honest with you, most people, it's not going to happen for, uh, happen to, because you'll go through that. I'm going to do this one day, going to do this one day. And then before you know it, 10 fucking years have gone by. You're still in the same job. You're still getting nagged by the same boss. <laughs> no one's winning. You're only losing at that point. I did. I started my LTD. Like one day I got dead thingy. I was like, right, I'm going to set it up, set up my LTD. I was still working at the time. But then it was like, weren't until six months later or something, or four, five, six months later that from starting the LTD yep. and doing no work mm -hmm. to then. But it was good because I caught myself on another day where I was like, uh, wanted to yeah, get yeah. to do some work and stuff. You know what I mean? But then because I already had the LTD set up, it, there was no waiting. Yeah, I was yeah. just like, right, I can start now. Because, exactly. And that's where like, if maybe, maybe if the limited company wasn't set up, exactly. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even be sat here I today. would have sat, start, started the LTD and then it could have took me another six months exactly. to get started. Exactly. And that's where sort of even just, and, and that's, again, you don't have to have everything figured out. It's one door at a time, one step in front of the other. You do that for you. That's a perfect example of it. How just having that little head start that you've done mm -hmm. months prior. Yeah. You've not done anything with it but it then set the tone to actually build and scale. Exactly. The good thing with Ben as well is um, he's not, I feel like you're fully getting ingrained in this sort of lifestyle now with like multiple income streams and stuff like that. And you've seen that through starting your TikTok, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And how did, what, what prompted you to start that first of all? And then we'll touch on the money side of it. Yeah. Well, obviously, like I said, I uh, mentioned Craig before from the money project. He's my older brother's, mate from school so yep. i've known him for years uh he started doing tiktok yep seeing it going he'd started it like a year before but yep. at this point I'd, I'd seen his from the start and it had been going well uh, and he started doing something similar like reselling and then he did the amazon fba thing as well so yep. i thought what i'll do is while i'm starting the fba i'll start the tiktok from the start you yep. know so you can see me starting yeah just you just documenting the journey exactly so yeah. like rather than because you see these guys pop up on tiktok and they're like First video, I've made 500 grand from Amazon. Yep. Listen to me. It's like, no. who the fuck's this guy? Yeah, yeah. My first video, I was like, 
I've just found this Amazon thing, going to try it out, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then if you go back on my TikTok for the first six months, I literally show everything. At the end of every month for the first six months, I go back through it and I'm like, this is how much I spent on items. This is how much profit I made. This is how many units I sold. This is my ROI. This is what, what, what yeah, did that for yeah, the first really, six months. Really sort of painting the full picture. Because that's what I wanted, that was the point of it at the start. I wanted to show the beginning. And, it, and as well, it's like, it's probably, you've got, you're at a good point there and that content probably would have been very useful for you to be watching before you started. It would have helped with a picture of what to expect. And then if you know you can just do that for other people, it's great. Yeah, well, do you know, it's mad to be fair because before I started that, I'd never, I'd never touched it. I used to slag it off. I hated TikTok, do you know what yeah, I mean? I, I didn't have TikTok <laughs> until maybe about two and a half years into running Aftermarket. Yeah. Um, and I only got TikTok to start Aftermarket's TikTok. Yeah, that, that's all I did. Like, I hated TikTok. I still kind of hate it. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. like, I, I like it for what I do yeah. on it. But 90% of people are just watching like these mad like I see my mate's sister, she just sits on it all day watching Yeah, you get stuff. a TikTok hole and then you don't come out for an hour yeah, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. like, I've Literally, just scrolled for an hour. I don't know what should happen. I barely even, I do, I get caught in it sometimes, I'm not going to lie, but yeah. I don't really go on the For You page for TikTok. Like I never go on it to look at stuff. Yeah. But say I'm looking at my own replying to comments and sometimes I'll get caught on the For You page and like you say, I'll be going for it and I'm yeah. like, and the, the weirdest thing about that, I think, um, I think it was side men that were talking about it where like they did like, I don't know if it was like a bit of an experiment where they said like, right, go through. And then it's what, what video did you watch five videos ago? And like the brain <laughs> yeah, rot is no that chance, bad. No you've chance. got no idea of what you've just been through. Um, and it, it is, it's absolutely crazy. However, you've done it in the correct way. Um, and in my eyes, and it's the way that I use it, it's, not from a consumer perspective, it's from a producer, supplier. Creator. We are creating that content for other people to consume, mm -hmm. which then in turn, like it does for us, like it is now doing for you, there's monetary gain to that. Exactly. So you've been doing your TikTok for how long now? Same time as the Amazon since August. Oh, I, I, so the first post on my TikTok is the first box I sent into Amazon. Nice. It's That's a HelloFresh nice. box. Yeah, I got yeah, off yeah. My man. <laughs> that was the so, first one I sent in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's sick. And then you've now built that to a point where you've got steady income stream coming in, right? Mm -hmm. Again, starting Amazon, he's not, yes, he's using it as a tool to earn money through FBA, but then it's also become a tool to build a platform, which is earning money from a completely other angle. And again, you're traveling, your money's still coming in yep. from the TikTok stuff. Yeah. Think. Simple, right? Start one thing, you don't know where you're going to end up. Like us, sure. starting with them Yeezys. <laughs> wouldn't ever dream that I'd be sat here, like, and that any of this would have happened. But it all started with taking action on one thing. And with yourself, do you think that that background has transferred across to today? 100%, bro. 100%. I was saying it before, like, I was thinking at, uh, when we was talking about these people who come in the comments, and there's all these ways to make money, but your average person doesn't see them. And it's because you're conditioned to work and work your nine five. That's where you get your money from. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. That's how you told life works. You wake up in the morning, you go do your job, you get your money and then you can live. Mm -hmm. So they don't even ever see that you can do all this stuff. I wouldn't have known if I never did reselling. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you buy a shoe and you sell it and make like someone's week wage overnight, Mate, you're just like, it happened, to, it happened to me. Like I had, a, um, a summer job and I was on like five or an hour. I think I was like 16. I was on worse than that, yeah. bro. I was on three pound 80. Really? Pulled, yeah, three pound wow. 80 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we had, and that job, like, do you know what? It For me, it was like a, it was, a, it was actually a blessing. Like I did it for a couple of summers on the bounce actually. And I, the actual work, oh God, like, Really bad. Yeah. However, doing that made me realize very early on, there's got to be something different. Yeah. To this. There has to be. Yeah. Like, and then when I was like, right, well, I've just made four hundred pound on my first pair of Yeezys, and I was earning two hundred pound in a week. Exactly. That there's something here. Started digging on Twitter, found this paid community, paid, just grew, 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 and it. It's literally, you, 
You need to stop thinking that that nine to five is the be all and end all. At the end of the day, if you try this, it works for six months. You then decide, right, I'm going to leave my job now. You've got a safety net. You've got money in place. You then do it for the next three years, right? If then you decide, actually, I want to go back to the nine to five. So do it. You've just gained your experience and you're always going to get a job back. It's not like they're going to say, no, you've, You've tried your own business, you're not coming back. If anything, it's probably going to benefit you because yeah. you'll go to an employer and they'll be like, oh, well, you've had experience running a company. Right, okay, sound. What did you do? What was that like? The skills you'll pick up from doing that, uh, you can't get from being in the company. That's right. It's like what I did with the call centre. Did it for like 18 months, ended up being a failure. But if I didn't do that, with sales, I don't know if you know, anyone who works in a call centre, you get jobs like that. Like. Mm -hmm. You can literally walk, you can get sacked. You can walk out the door, walk over the road and go in another call center and they'll, they'll hire you straight away. Yep. Um, but yeah, like your average call center agent, I've done this for two years now. So if I had to go back and get a call center job, I know all the ins and outs of, I can set up a dialer. Do you know if mm -hmm. someone needs a dialer system setting up or all this behind the scenes stuff that no one would know. Yeah, yeah. I've done all this myself now because I've done it for myself and my own business and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, God forbid I did have to go and get a nine five and I had to go and uh, work in sales again. I'd be like 10 times more useful than any other staff member because I know what, all the manager stuff, I know all the agent stuff. I know everything from every level. Yep. I've got a question for you. Here. This is one that I'm really, really interested in. So, uh, and again, I've talked about this on our Instagram. Every single person that I spoke to speak to is, and it, what you said then was prompted this question. Every single person that I speak to that is, let's say, an entrepreneur, a business owner, the worst thing in the world for them is going back to the nine to five. <laughs> no, it is. Yeah, definitely. So when, I don't, I don't even, like, what, what do you think it is that, like, because for me, I look at it as, like, what do we know that you don't? If you're in that nine to five and you're, like, hating on business owners or hating on people that are trying to do all this stuff, like, but we're saying the worst possible thing that could happen to me now is going back to the position you're sat in. Yeah. What do you think it is that like has made you feel that way? Cause you said then God forbid go back to the <laughs> nine to five. What, what do you think it is? No. Well, um, with me personally, do you know, like I just hate having people tell me what to do. Yeah. I've probably got some kind of authority issue. <laughs> yeah. like, do you know what I mean? I can't, yeah. I, I don't care what it is. And like, it's, I can't have a guy who's my manager like yeah, yeah, shouting yeah. at me or just, do you know what I mean? I can't have someone else above me. Yeah, yeah. And that might be, uh, what's the word, narcissistic, whatever, but fuck it, I don't care. I mean, it's, that's so common in terms yeah. of like, I, I've said it all the time. And even when like I was in my jobs, like how common is it like hating your boss? Yeah, like it's going to happen because they've got authority over you. You're yeah. allowing someone else to have authority yeah. over you. Yeah, and it's, it's even like, and again, another interesting thought, and I want your, your, your sort of thoughts on this, what I was thinking about, right? Do you know when people say, um, when like, they're like, <clears throat> oh, I don't back myself to do it. I don't trust that this is going to be able to happen, uh, that I'm going to be able to make it work. Um, I'm too scared. I'm not confident enough. To me, right, with what we do, our income is completely within our control. Yeah. Input leads to output and then we see monetary gain first of all if you're in a company especially a big company that input that you're putting in you've got no idea where it comes out at the yeah. end so you don't see the output and you don't know how much money's been made off the back of what you've just started yeah. owning your own business first of all you do secondly you don't trust yourself or back yourself enough to have direct control of your income however you trust that yeah. your boss is going to pay you you trust that you're going to get that promotion in four years time. You trust that the money's going to come through and the company's going to be successful. Yeah. Everything else is in someone else's hands. And at the end of the day, if they want to, you could be gone like that. And exactly. you're tr just trusting that it's not going to happen, that you're, you're going to, you're trusting that your nine to five money is going to keep coming in when in reality it could be cut off. You could be replaced within a day. Like you've just said about the sales. You can go from place to place to place. Exactly. Like, and again, people can be fired, fired, fired. Yeah. But all job people need to re people who work in nine fives as well, they need to realize that they hold a lot more power than they think. Like most people just think, oh, I've got, to, I've got to do what my boss says. Blah, blah, blah. Like if you leave, it's going to mess his stuff up. You don't want you to leave, but you allow 
them to have that authority over mm -hmm. you. Like me, I always saved my money. I've always had like savings yep. about me. So if, you know I mean, if a if, manager ever talks shit to me, I just leave. I've walked yeah. out of so many jobs and I don't care. I'm not like, I just leave, yeah, no, yeah. no conversation, just yeah. go, walk yeah. out, never see me again. Yep. But you need to put yourself in that position to be able to do that. If you're in debt and you're waiting for your paycheck so you can pay your overdraft or whatever, yeah. you got no choice. The manager can speak to you as much as he want, he can do whatever he wants to you. And you're just stuck there because you need that yeah. money off him yeah, at yeah. the end of the month to pay mm -hmm. your stuff. And, and that's it. Like so many of my friends, like from growing up, it's like the, 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 the that week before the paycheck for them is stress. And please believe me that there is a much more, the grass is way greener on the other side. You don't have to stay in that position. I'm not saying that from like, I don't want anyone to take that the wrong way in sort of like an egotistical way. It should, you should listen to this and actually realize that, well, I've done it, you've done it. Loads of people are fucking doing it. If you like, again, think about this quote, if you don't know how to make £10,000 a month, that is costing you £10,000 a month because there's probably a million people making £10,000 a month in the UK. Yeah. So they know something that you don't, right? You do not have to be in that situation where you are struggling month on month, but no one's going to change that situation for you. Your boss isn't just yeah. going to give you a handout and say, actually, here's an extra 20 grand get on, just to get yourself on your feet. Um, it's not going to happen. You've got to do something about it yourself. And something like this is your entry level way of making that change, right? Yeah. Even just like saving money, like people just, people get the paycheck for the month and they see it as like, right, I've got this much money to spend. Oh, it's disposable. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, you don't, you don't need to be a millionaire. If you just saved up your wages for fucking four months and you had, say you had like five grand cash in your bank, that, that's, an, that's enough for you to tell your manager to do one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And live off before you find a new job. Exactly. I mean, you just need that. Like, it's a safety net. There yeah, just to do yeah. what you want. Or, yeah. or otherwise, you just like, like you say, and that's the manager what, can do whatever. And we always say, I, I always say like, I had a conversation with someone uh, not so long ago. He was thinking about now going full-time to FBA. And the first thing I said, well, have you got a proper buffer in place that, God forbid, something goes wrong. Let's say your Amazon account gets banned. Mm. You can't get back onto it. Have you got a buffer in place to see yourself through. That is like one of the key things that people need. And it still applies to the nine to five. But, and again, you might agree with me on this. You might not. I don't actually think the nine to five is really bad. I think the way that people use it and the mindset yeah. around it is bad. The nine to five wholeheartedly, 100% should just be a tool, a tool that you use to then fund your own thing. And then you escape it and leave that nine to five, hopefully consistent money, reliable work, decent level of security to then propel yourself where you're to a point where you're fully in control. But I don't think many people look at it that way. Well, like everyone's got to do a nine to five at some point. Do you know what I mean? Unless you're born into some like trust fund. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if you're some trust fund baby or something, yeah. then maybe you won't have to, but it's like, say, say you what 18 years older on 20 grand a year living at your mum's. You could do that job for the next five years or maybe give it six years, bit of spending money in that. You got fucking hundred grand mm -hmm. at like 23. Mm -hmm. You're nice, you can do whatever. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. But people just- oh, That, oh, that, that definitely never bang. happens. But I, I, do you know yeah. what? I'm guilty of it. Yeah. So I had money in college from doing shoes and I was dead because I knew what it took. I had to go out and camp for these shoes and yep. I'd slowly built up this like four or five grand or whatever I had. Um, I didn't want to spend it because I'd worked hard for it. But then- Left at 18, got a job in a call center. I was like, oh, I'm getting 1,200 quid at the end of every month. My like, sweet, it's just going to come back. So I was just going out, spending it, buying clothes, spent all my five grand savings. All, all, I, I had five grand or four or five grand left mm -hmm. college. One year in a nine five, I was in a grand overdraft. Wow. But that was like a big lesson for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that 12 months, like, I'll never do that again. Do yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. That was my one year where I was like fucked about money and I was like, wow. Yeah. How the it, fuck have I got it, in this it, position? I think it happens to the best was me. Like, with um with myself when I was at so I went into university and I had a pot of like I think it was around about twenty five k that I'd built up from hundred quid went to university with that and then I sort of fell off with the reselling because for me at that point in time I wanted to be an investment banker needed a first had told been told what I needed from these jobs like um and I get a job if I did all this so all that was Focus study bro. On. Focus on study, like tunnel vision, 
let, let it slip. And then I remember getting to a point where I was booking holidays and stuff. Like, like everyone in uni, my uni accommodation were like, um, like in their overdraft. And I was on two week, all inclusive to Mexico. <laughs> like not like, because I had that money there. But then I got to a point where I'd always said to myself, don't go under 10, don't go under 10. Yeah, yeah. And then I got to eight and I was like, shit, <laughs> shit. Like now it needs to change. Yeah, I need yeah, to yeah. put this back into my life. And then it was, it was probably a few months later um, where I started aftermarket with 2000 pounds. Mm. Um, and that is now 2000 pounds to a seven figure company. You don't need a fucking lot to start, right? All you need is, to be honest with you, you can even make it work. I spoke to someone the other day and I'm not recommending to do this, but however, they have grew their Amazon business. That They're sat now, uh, um, they've just crossed 250K in sales. Yeah. They started purely through credit cards, yeah. none of their own money. I said, oh, it's, a few people do that. Like, yeah. If you get started with it and you're making money, then and you know you're going to... You, Obviously, you got to be smart of it. You can't just be a dickhead it's a, and start. Yeah. It's a in, slippery but, game, that, yeah. um, because <laughs> you could. it's a slippery slope. It could go bad. However, if you're very disciplined and you're doing everything by the book, yes, that's still viable. You're, you're, you're actually building um, a six-figure company with none of your own money. Exactly. And you don't have to... Do you know what I mean? You can start with a credit card that has 500 quid and then use that. And if it then asks for more, but... If you sold like free items and you go get a ten grand credit card and spend it all, then you're asking for trouble, aren't you? Yeah, a million percent, a million percent. Now, one thing that we get asked a lot about, and I, I, I reckon your audience might as well, returns. Yeah. How much of a problem is returns in FBA for you? For for me personally, it's it's not a problem at all. Obviously, you get returns, not a lot. Put it this way: saying them hair dryers. And everyone always says, I've had so many people tell me not to do electricals because the returns are mad. I'm just like, they're the fucking highest profit items. Yeah, yeah. So I sold 120 of these hair dryers. I think I had five returned. Three went back into the inventory. And then two was at two, the box was damaged. I've got them at my gaff now. Well, I spent 15 quid on them. They go for like 60 quid in the shop. I'll just put them on eBay and well, that's still a, make a raise. Exactly. So there you go. You've had the full process pretty much described to you there. If it gets returned, it can still be resold. 90%, go, yeah. They all go back into your inventory. Yeah. It's so rare that you get a damaged product. Yeah. If it's damaged, put it on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and just squeeze out whatever cash you can. But you that should not be a limiting factor with regard to starting. And when I'm on the phone to people, sales call wise, that is one of the most common questions we get. Like, oh, I'm worried about. But then that makes me think because a lot of people do just return shit to Amazon, don't they? Like, because. Yeah. I think they're like, oh, the returns policy is dead good. And it's probably because they're guilty in their head of doing it. So then yeah. it's like, oh, well, is this going to affect my business if everyone's got the same sort of mindset? But it's not an issue, is it? You've got to fucking use it to your advantage. Do you know what I mean? Like Pete's customers do it. I do it with A2A. I long out Amazon yeah. with their yeah, returns. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's I'm, Amazon. You're not affecting other FBA sellers. It's exactly. like, it's not their inventory. It's Amazon's. Well, is it, if it was A2A, I'd probably do it to an FBA seller. As <laughs> as <laughs> as <you know> <laughs> I mean? We've had, um, <laughs> but we've had a, uh, um, who was it? <laughs> Can't remember who it was, but like a uh, listing got completely bricked. Yeah. Um, and oh, that's it. So um, the client, I, I don't know if you will have seen it actually. This is actually a pretty good story, but the guy, there's a guy that I do one-to-one with, multi-multi-millionaire. Um, he's just had a deal um, that's come to him for six, it's like 6,500 uh, microwaves. Mm. Um, they are... 30 quid profit per unit, 79% return on investment, 3,000 sales a month. Nice. So the deal is like, what, like probably two, it's around 200K. Yeah. Obviously he's got a lot of money to play with and he's like going that and he's getting more shit as well, but all yeah. from this one one supplier. Um, but what he would do up with A2A was, he would just like buy out everyone. Like if there was, you know, like other FBA sellers, yeah, 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 yeah. he would just buy, buy stock, stock, buy stock, buy stock, yeah, buy stock, yeah. and then just like pull it out. That happens as well. Um, but with the, let's talk about this because this is a, a very controversial topic within FBA. Yeah. We get slammed with it all the time, but as do all groups. Um, however, something I don't shy away from whenever we have a phone call with people, bricking. Yeah. Now, 
one of the most infuriating things for me is, and it happened, it could happen in aftermarket, is where product might brick, right? If that product lead bricks, doesn't mean it's aftermarket members necessarily. Yeah. There's how many other competitors out there? How many other people selling on Amazon? It's a free market. We'll do what we can. However, we can't control it. Yeah. And, but the, the bricking issue to me is, it is nonsensical in a way. The only real rationality I can have behind it is where people are too, one, they're scared and they want to recoup the money back and they just don't care. Yeah. Like I remember people do it with trainers in the Facebook groups that you used to sell them all in. And then people would just be like selling dead low and everyone was Trying like- to get retail yeah, back and, and, and retail plus shipping. Yeah, everyone's like, fucking hell, do you need to give your mum my money back? Like <laughs> that's what always rings in my mind when yeah. I think about brickers. But for you, how have you found it and how much of an impact has it had? Um, to be honest, I was pretty good with it when I first started. Like if something bricked, I just refuse. But I'm not selling it for that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just wait and you got, was it three months till they start? charging storage or yeah. whatever. So I just give it three months, me. If it's not gone in three months, then I'll drop it. But I've had stuff here where it's like, I bought 10 units, it's been bricked. There's like 200 sellers on it. It's gone down from like 17 quid to like three pound or something mm. stupid. It was like some cosmetic, you know, that inky list stuff. Yes, it yeah. always gets bricked, yeah. always. But it was the first time I'd ever bought it. Uh, and then literally for three months, I, it was, I was looking at like a five pound loss. And I just kept, kept checking the amount of sellers. Mm -hmm over the three months going down, going down. And then it eventually went back up and I got full price for him. So yeah. and that happens on most of them. Yeah, yeah, they're going to rebound. You just wait. Yeah, like, yeah. You got, the sales are going to be there. So you just got to wait for all these guys to sell it. And like patience is yeah, a Yeah, you've got to wait for the idiots to clear off the list. And it's literally just, it's hyper competition. And I remember literally studying this university. Too many people, obviously the price is going to be eroded. It, everyone wants to acquire that sale. And it's, well, who's willing to go the cheapest? Idiots, but yeah, it makes sense. It's a free market. Now, that guy, uh, I'll shout out Josh. I'm going to tag Josh as well. Josh is the guy that does 50K Profit Month. He was like, bricking, yeah, happens all the time. Still happens to him. He does around about 250 to 300K revenue a month. Uh, still loads of stuff that I get on. Will brick. However, I'll just sit and wait. I'll sit on my hands. So what else can you do? Exactly. You know what I mean? It, again, it's not, yes, it's annoying, but... It's not, at the end of the day, we can't go and enforce a rule on people, can we? Yeah. And be like, I'm chopping your hands off if you fucking drop drop below X price. I'd love to do it, <laughs> but it's not possible. Yeah. Uh, and people obviously think freely, but it's, again, it's something that I think everyone goes through and then you learn from it. And then when it happens again, okay, I'm going to apply this approach. Or you look at the characteristics of the listing, like you just said with that inky thing, the you're like, that always breaks. Yeah. So being in the game, the longer and longer you spend in the game, the less likely that this is just going to happen. That's what I'm saying. You learn things, don't you? Like little tips like that. But like, you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Of course you are. You should, yeah. You but should. that's why RA is so good because you can just take it back. Yeah. Like you're right. You can go up. Like when you knew, maybe you feel a bit like awkward in the shop or something. Yeah. You know what yeah I mean, yeah. you don't want to stand there for ages scanning stuff. Because I was a bit like that. I don't care now, but... um if you're not too sure on it and you don't want to stand in the shop for like 20 minutes, think you just buy it, take it home. Then when you're chilling at home, do you, you can go proper research, go for all the charts, make sure you're happy with it. If you're not, you can just return it. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how I got set. I used to return loads of stuff at the start. Yep. Like, and you're like a bit of an idiot, but you just, you, you get you through it up. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like after it, you've done, after you've walked around clearing sections for fucking two months, you don't care anymore. Do yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. And what, like, I don't know if you will have found the same, but we always find it like, like in like uh, Manchester Boots on Salford Retail Park, um, they they fucking buzz off it. Like if we were walking yeah, there yeah. and they're like, oh, the back. <laughs> and it's like, oh, we've got this there. And like, I've even had it before where in Home Bargains in Lee, where they've come, got to me, they're like, there's, a, there's an Amazon seller in there the other day. He was scanning those. Do you want to go and have a look at them? Where was that? Uh, uh, in Lee. Oh, I was going to say. And, uh, and then I got a new lead from it that I wouldn't have actually scanned. It was a full sticker item yeah. that I wouldn't have found otherwise. Like, I think... Yeah, you might think people are looking at you weird, but the staff actually like from I've only I've had a few negative experiences, but the positives outweigh it way more. Yeah, they and, are the main mainly positive. Superdrug staff love me, bro. Yeah. Like that was my main shop when I first started. Yeah. So 
more or less every super drug at the fort. Like the woman I always speak to, because she she used to check my points every time I'd go and I think <laughs> building up. I had loads of points and she told me to spend them before they expire. So I got rid of them there. But um, that one as well, do you know, like I was talking about them Hawaiian tropics that scanned yeah, through yeah. like a quid. I bought loads there and they was all buzzing off it. And they came and brought me like this free gift, like this big inflatable, like a uh, Hawaiian tropics <laughs> yeah. Lilo thing. It was it weren't a full size Lilo, yeah, it was like yeah. a small one in it. But they give me that. And then uh, there was another super drug that was a bit far away that doesn't see many customers. So then obviously when I come in and just clear it out, it's like a big thing for them. And now every time I go in there, the woman's like, oh, I've got, got yeah, this, yeah, like, yeah. this mad hair dye for 69p. I'm like, yeah, man, just give me all this yeah, shit as yeah. soon as I walk in. So. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Like the, the, the positives that you get far outweigh the very few negatives. Um, one thing that I want to go into that we didn't really touch on with the content side. I know we spoke a lot about sort of maybe trying to help people with a mindset around stuff, but TikTok comments, <laughs> go. Give me your... <laughs> oh, I don't even know where to get started, bro. Like, if you go on my account and some of them videos, and the videos that have got the most views, like, it was funny, I sent one of them to my brother, one of them that got loads of views. I sent it to him on Insta uh, Instagram, the link, and he's seen it. And then he just didn't reply to me, so I was like, was fucking blank, man. And then he got back to me like two hours later, he was yeah. like, bro, I've just finished going through <laughs> all the comments. So I was like, it's mad. Like I've never seen any comment section on any platform where you get so many like haters and no. disbelievers. And yeah. it's, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. The, um, like my mates from back home, they, um, they were here uh, on the weekend. It seems like when I'm bored at night, I'll come and look in your comment section <laughs> because there's just, it's like, it's just fucking entertainment. Now I don't know. And you, I, I assume that you're going to be the same here. I would never be someone to go and comment fucking shit on someone's video. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever commented on a public post in my life. No, do I, like, no. But it's for me, it's who are these creatures that yeah, are just bro. sat there doing this, like rage typing? Doom scrollers, bro. That's what they're called, <laughs> isn't it? They're just all night scrolling through until they fucking fall asleep. Like, they're just on it all night. And the worst part, the guys on my comment section are lucky, bro, that TikTok is so strict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you can't say anything no, on TikTok. I've you got, get banned. I've gone back with like, I like, obviously, part of the game is fueling the fire. More engagement, more responses. But like, there's been some insults where like, I, I called someone a donut the other day and come up community guideline violation. I was like, what? Bro, like, it's mad. I got a video removed because I said, uh, I called people losers at the start. And it got removed and I was like, what the fuck, man? It was a good video as well. Yeah. So I was pretty so, rude. Right, but sorry for giving someone a reality check. Yeah, bro. If uh, if TikTok weren't as strict on the rules, bro, my these guys <laughs> in my comments would be getting hammered. Dude. If you go if you go down on my thing when I first started, uh, there was a guy and he just put some stupid stuff and he had a mad profile picture. Like I just looked at his head, clicked on it, went on his thing, and it was like a 40-year-old bloke sat in his gaff on his own doing TikToks of him like uh lip syncing to like like kids songs and shit and I was just like who is this guy so I, I went on his page I screen recorded it. I went on his page and I just scrolled through like the first five videos yeah. and I was like this is like the kind of people that you see in my comments and then everyone yeah. was just catching joke off yeah it. but I'd do that more and I'd be yeah. a lot more harsh to him if I was yeah, allowed yeah. to but I don't want to get banned so. yeah no I know it's it, it, it's it's people like that shouldn't be fucking protected mate um that mate this is a bad one like so at the moment I've got I started paying someone to do my tiktok so he just creates all the content, does all of it. I don't really see any of it, yeah. any of it. And I went onto it and um, there's a guy commenting on every video. He's like, your MOT's expired. Your MOT's expired in your car. Bro. Your MOT's expired. He's like, still not got it back. Do you need a, uh, uh, still not, still not got, got an MOT, have you made like a couple of weeks later? Right, first of all, I've got another fucking car. I don't <laughs> need it. And it's winter. That is a supercar. I'm not going out in it. yeah. yeah, yeah. What, why do people have that much time on their hand, bro, to go and check whether my car's MOT? Do you know what it is, bro? It's like, they see you making the money in that, and then rather than doing it themselves, they need to like, in their own mind, they need to like make it seem worse than it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it so, it's like pulling away from what it actually is. Yeah, and yeah, make, yeah. Like, yeah. like people comment it. on mine like, that this is stupid. And people back me up in the comments this as well, because it is that stupid, but people are like, yeah, well, you got to pay tax on that. I'm like, yeah, so fucking, yeah, you yeah. got to pay tax yeah, on whatever bro, you do, bro. I you fucking, mad? That is, hope you've told HMRC about this. Yeah. People, say, fucking people say they hope HMRC are going to catch me. I'm like, bro, 
It's legit. Yeah. I've got an LTD. I pay my tax like yeah. like everyone does. Yeah. So I actually probably pay more tax than you. Yeah. yeah. So sure. I'm like, what are you on about <laughs> yeah. HMRC? Are you going to catch me? And I'm like, they, they, they are. Uh, but those people who write in the comments, they in their minds are the smartest people in the room. Oh, mate. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they don't realize all they're doing is playing into our hand and just fueling the algorithm, and we win again. And they see. And also, mate, the algorithm is that good. Like, have you ever had it where? You could be talking about something and then like seeing an ad for it and shit. All the time. Yeah. Mate, if you're fucking, if, if there's something coming up on your feed, right, about side hustles, making money, doing more, that is because your other behavior online yeah. is suggesting that like that content is right for you and you need to be doing that. Yeah. Like the algorithm's fucking telling you at that point. No, it, is. it doesn't get, so, or... You keep yourself in that. You maybe you hate the content and you've yeah, stumbled upon it, but, but you keep keeping yourself in the loop. <laughs> so every time you keep engaging, with yeah, it, we moments. get it on our YouTube shorts, bro. Where someone's like, "I've literally um, like," he's commenting like, "This is fucking stupid." And then the next comment on the video is like, "Why is this still on my feed?" Like, and it was like, "Well, come on, use your fucking mind, mate." Yeah, um, so obviously at this point, you've got Amazon up and running, working well for you. Got your TikTok stuff, your money coming in. Where do you sort of, I know you're, you may be pondering on going away and stuff like that. What, what do you think you're going to be doing maybe in 12 months time? How, how does that look for you as you sit right now? Yeah. So, uh, well, when I first got back, I was, I wanted to move to Asia. I wanted to move to Thailand or Vietnam or something like that. Uh, was was there a reason for that actually? Well, to be honest, obviously my brother lives in Vietnam. So I've been there before, but, uh, it's like the life out there, man, it's cheap. And sunny everyday beaches, like England gets a bit depressing, bro. And I'm out there, yeah. it's like everything's just better. Mate, that's something that I learned from Dubai, and we could touch on this a little bit. I never wanted to go to Dubai. And I was always like, because everyone that I knew that got, went to Dubai from the area I grew up in, they're all running from a problem here to go yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. escape it and be over there. I didn't want to go. Went, it was supposed to be three days, ended up being three weeks. I don't think people realize what the sun does for you every day. Oh, bro, I it, talk about this so much. Like, it make it just puts you in a good mood straight away. Every bro. day, immediately. Sick. Boom, wake up, sun's already battering you in the face. You can't be unhappy and depressed. Everyone over there, mate, <coughs> and in, in all these hot, hotter countries, they're fucking way happier than here. It's, it is this now. It plays a massive... Play. It's fucking mate, horrible, This morning, mate. how bad was the weather this morning? Mate, me like, and him were walking to the shop and we were just like, fucking hell. Like, it's horrible. And I think that, when you've been in the UK, and it's all you've ever really known, you actually underestimate how much of a big impact that has on your mate. life. And the lads that I met in Dubai, some of them, like one of them, bro, 900 grand in a day made. <laughs> like, there was guys there that were doing, like between so one of them was selling his product nine grand he sells two to three a day every day like they were all like <laughs> they were literally talking about it and this is what prompted it now when I, I thought about it with you the sun they're like you're just so much fucking happier you're in a better mindset better state of mind to actually go and work of course yeah. you've got distractions and you've got to be disciplined when you go away but that soon gets out of the way once you've done the holiday aspect of it like if you went back to thailand now you've already done like you didn't like you said you didn't work over there you treated it as a holiday yeah, yeah, yeah. you probably now would feel much more comfortable getting a base yeah 100%. and grinding it out yeah so go on carry on with where you where you're up to yeah well obviously like you said like the sun i know myself it's massive massive impact like i always say to people i've been telling my mates for ages like england shit i need to yeah. get out of here i need to go thailand vietnam or whatever um but the sun being out it just makes you want to do stuff. Like when you wake up this morning, it was pissing it down in Manchester. You just look outside the window and you're like, fuck that, I'm staying in there. Yeah. You know I mean, I don't, can't be asked going out. If you yeah. normally you'd say you was going to go shop or something, yeah. you look at it and you're like, well, that's it. Like, sack that. My morning routine, pretty much every morning, is go for a walk, go to the shop, sit down, start work. And then it's like, it, like, like this, throws you out your routine. And then I'm like, oh, when do I go? I need to, I want to go out because it's like my routine. It's what yeah. I like, but it's just fucking shit, mate. Yeah. And it's, uh, when the sun's out, it's like, you can't wait to get out the house. You know, it's a good place for that. I went Bali as well, you yeah. know. 
Bali is like full of people who are working, you know, mm-hmm. like freelancers and stuff. So pretty much everywhere you go in Bali is like a co-working space. Yeah, you know, yeah. like all the restaurants that like you go in there, everyone's just sat on the laptop. You yeah. spend like a tenner on food and drink and you can just sit in there all day yeah. and do your work. But um, that's like a good place to be because everyone's sort of like... On the same level. Yeah, like, everyone. Yeah, yeah. You, you do have some people who are there on holiday, but the people who live there, like everyone's sort of on a grind. So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. everyone's doing the same and again, stuff. again, that's, that's what's really good to be around, isn't it? It's 100%. The, the lads that I met out in Dubai were all like, I was very happy that when I got introduced to them, um, that I was probably the lowest earner. Um, but for me, that's great. I want to learn from all these guys. Exactly. I'll, be a, I'll be a sponge and I'll sit there. And like everyone out there, happy, willing to help for free. Come back from Dubai with um, a guy, the guy that did 900 grand a day. He's now building me a new platform like CRM to manage all of our customers. He's, um, there's a manual task that I have to do with Aftermarket and a few of my businesses. And it is the most painstaking and laborious project in yeah. the, uh, product in the world. This guy runs like an AI company. He has, um, he, he said like, what's the biggest pain? So I said this, if I get a hundred customers through this painful process, takes probably around about two full days of my time to process those customers. Mm. He, within 30 minutes, has whipped up a solution that fully automates it and so, give it me for free. And it's like that just networking and being around those people, all in similar industries, all online, it's invaluable then. I've just gained back time and you can't value time, can you? So it's, yeah, you, if you're listening, put yourself out there. Like I got introduced to those people um, didn't, I only knew one person and he wasn't there all the time. And I've come back with new business and like, as in I've won business over there that will be very good for the future. And then also, um, basically products and services that I can now add to aftermarket and other businesses that will just make life so much easier just from conversations with the right people. So get out there. Um, now you're not sure on whether... Do you think you would continue FBA and get a prep center or are you still up in the air? No, I still want to do, uh, I'm obviously stick with the FBA stuff. Uh, I'm just not sure what I want to do like with my life really. Like obviously I, I want to be at a point where, as we were saying before, I'm not tied down to like a specific country. So I want to be able to just move freely. I'm not really bothered where the money comes from that allows me to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. As long as I can move around. But FBA is perfect because... It's going well for me now. Obviously, like you say, prep center. I was yep. going to do that in Thailand originally, but I treat it as a holiday, but get a prep center. You could just, you could probably live off just A to A. Yeah. Just A to A, just in another country, doing yep. that straight to a prep center, into Amazon. But um, yeah, that's the uh, the main thing is I just want to be uh, free. I was going to sell my car when I got back. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm going to sell my car. That's like my main thing. I'll go, but I'm getting a new car next week. That's what I'm oh. saying for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> So yeah, but you're going to be here for at least a little bit longer. Um, no, but I'm, yeah, I agree with that. And I like it because even if, let's say you go to Thailand, whatever, and you get to a point three years down the line and you're like, oh, I don't want to do FBA anymore. Yeah. Well, you're going to have a nice pot of capital yeah. to then put into something else. But you've also then got all of this confidence to back yourself going into a new business. Mm-hmm. And think of it like this. You don't have to necessarily be passionate about FBA and love it. Again, like I said, the nine to five, use it as a tool, a stepping stone to then go on to what you want to do. That's another thing people always say as well. It's like, do something you love. It's like, fuck that, bro. I'll do anything yeah. if the dough's there. Yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I don't care. Like yeah. work's work. I'm never going to enjoy it. That's, I'll do whatever makes the money. Tate did a video on that where he literally says like, there's like some billionaire in Africa who owns like a, a concrete company. He's like, do you think he's passionate about concrete? <laughs> exactly. He's right, not right. like you, the, the, I think people get very lost in chasing their passion early on. And if you've not got the right foundations, knowledge wise and financially, it could be a passion, but you may never be able to realize that in like that business may never materialize yeah. without learning from something that, yeah, stable, maybe a bit more boring. Like Iman Gaji, he says like, my the businesses that do the best for me are the most boring ones. I think it's, um, I think it's, don't quote me in the comment section if I'm wrong, Usher, I think it's Usher, or yeah, or Jason Drill, someone like that. He's 
biggest and most profitable endeavor is car washes. Seen that the other day. Yeah. Who, yeah. Is, who is it? I, I can't remember. Who? You know, I've seen the thing in it about him having a I don't, car wash. I don't know if I've got it completely wrong. It's someone in the US. It's definitely like a rapper. Yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. I see, I've seen the, uh, the post about it. Yeah. But car washes, yeah. like, he's not, it's not like he's, he fucking loves his a car yeah, wash. Right, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's just where the money comes in and then do what, do your other stuff on the side. Yeah. It's that, like, whatever you want to do, it's, you, can, you can put yourself, it's like, say, I didn't, I was w- working out what I wanted to do. And I was like, well, I like traveling. I like going to Thailand. Let's try and make some money by like in this travel industry, like fuck that. And it's go make dough. And then you can do what yeah. you want in your free time. Yeah. 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 You're not, you're not under pressure. You, you can make this money and have it coming in from another source yeah. whilst you're enjoying your time. And that's your Thailand trip was a prime example of that. It's not exactly. like you were like, like squirreling around trying to find like, oh God, I need 20 quid for this week. Yeah, Like no. you weren't flapping. You've got money coming in. You've got that safety net. And again, everyone on aftermarket knows the luxury of being on holiday and seeing the money still flow in just based on the previous work that you've done. It's very, very simple and it's very nice. Um, I guess, mate, we can pretty much wrap it up there. Now, what I'd like to do is, it may be a virtual one in the future if you Mm -hmm. are away, but we will touch back on and see where Ben's up to 12 months time. 100%. There's a few things that I want to touch on um, before we close off. Aftermarket is undergoing, Tony was made it to the end. You deserve to hear this. Um, (laughs) Aftermarket has a lot of new stuff coming. Um, Showed Ben a bit of it before. What is actual the future I think of aftermarket and it's pretty, pretty damn good. Um, I will share more details soon when I can. Um, but expect a lot more, let's say, in person. And also, there's more software coming to the Discord. A lot of stuff is being tested at the moment. And there's something that I don't think anyone's expecting. I'm under NDA, so I can't even speak about it properly. That is nearly done. So, lots of stuff coming, lots of stuff in the pipeline. Stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe. All of Ben's stuff will be down below. And thanks for coming on, mate. Been great chatting with you. Tons of value in here. And... I hope you've all found value in it. Best one.